Stars on you? I have stars in my eyes. Stand up. Oh no, on my on my shoulders. Stand up. <laughs> oh, she's showing Ooh. her boobs again. <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted, but I no. actually refrained. No, it's I mean, Natalie. Don't ask her to show her bra <laughs> because she will. I know. No. Mm. Oh no. No. <laughs> oh, you know what? Number one bra. Do you know today I'm wearing one that Debbie actually gave me about a year or two ago, and it's so pretty. I want to show you. Hold on. She gave Natalie I'll a bra show you a little bit oh. of it. Can you oh. see it? <laughs> and I've got the, the beige one of that, actually, Dee. Oh, you have? Yes, I have a beige oh, one. Caddy and, and Natalie, I are not I gave showing Natalie our bras. A bra. <laughs> I draw the lines. I've just got, like, a, you know, a kind of sports kind of vest top. <laughs> you? Yes. That will give them change. That will change because we yeah, are very say, oriented. Give them time, Debbie. Then you <laughs> never know. A few <laughs> more weeks. Yes, but I gave Natalie a, a, one of my lovely bras. It doesn't fit me anymore. Oh, I just never wore very, it. very. She pretty. loves it. But but Caddy, I Debbie took me aside one day. Well, she didn't take me aside. She said it very loudly in a rehearsal room. <laughs> what are you wearing? What are you wearing? And I said a sports bra. And she went, "That's got to stop." Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> and I um, have been introduced to number one bras, and I have to say they're absolutely fantastic. They are. So, well, by, by Debbie. She wouldn't have it. So don't say sports bra anywhere near Debbie. That's all right. <laughs> it's okay. She Jeanette it. from number one bra will soon be flying into the nest to have a word with you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Can you stretch in the number one bra? Can you kind of relax and stretch? And You ex- can do yes. everything and it doesn't shift and move around. No. And it's absolutely okay. fantastic. It really is. I'm a convert completely. There you yeah. go. Okay. Then I'm willing to be converted. <laughs> oh, oh, good. good. Okay, we shall, we'll yes, that. well, that's another thing. We're going to get on to that. So, uh, Caddy, who is coming in today? Oh, today we've got the wonderful John Hardy, who we've met before, me and Debbie, and he's just amazing. He's a geneticist, a very eminent man. He he was knighted in the New Year's Honours 2022, and um, he works on uh, dementia. Uh, He works on Alzheimer's. He's been given numerous prizes for his breakthrough, and uh, we're just delighted to see him and talk to him. There's too much to talk about in one show. (laughs) There he is. Four times, I think. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see him. Hello, John. Hi. 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 How lovely to see you again. You will notice that it's me and Caddy who you saw last time on Joe's show. Yes. Yeah. You're both looking well. Thank you. <laughs> and Thank you. And you you knew this time this was envisioned, so we are looking at you. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. So, so John, I mean, you're, you know, you are just an in- incredible man. It's so interesting, and we're so honoured that you have joined us today. Really honoured. Absolutely. Um, can you tell us how you started getting interested in this sort of form of research? You know, I've always wanted to work, do brain research. I've always wanted to do that. Ever since, actually, almost since I was a kid, my, my granddad was a pharmacist. And uh, I used to go out the back of his pharmacy and we, I used to, I can't believe it, but I'm sure it wouldn't happen now, mix medicines. Oh, God. And, huh? uh, I'm sure it was just, uh, you know, um, Epsom salts. I used to love watching <laughs> them fizz and change colour, uh, you know, with, uh, it, as, a, as a young kid. So I always wanted to do research and I always wanted to work on the brain. Um, and fortunately, I got the chance to do that. Yeah, that's how it Amazing. started. So I always wanted to do what I'm doing. Well, you've made yeah. an incredible breakthrough, John. And I, I mean, it, I, I have had members of my family um, with with dementia, and especially my great grandmother. I remember when I was a child seeing her deteriorate, and it was just such a sad, sad disease. I mean, for everyone apart from the person who has the disease, but. Do you also, I wanted to ask you, because I've, I've been reading a lot about dementia. Do you think that it is a sort of a genetic thing in, in, a, in families that runs in families? Uh, to, to some extent, it runs in families. I don't want everyone 
who's got a parent with dementia to be worried. Yes. If, if you've got a parent with dementia, it increases your risk, but not mm -hmm. by a huge amount. It does increase your risk, but not by a huge amount. There are a few families, but these families know that they're, you know, know that they are in them, so to speak, where it is a straightforward mm -hmm. genetic disease. But that's quite rare. That's quite yes. rare. Excellent. And the breakthrough you've made is a revolutionary one, isn't it? And something yeah. that... Yeah, can you tell us about that, John? The actual breakthrough of sure. what it actually means? Sure. So there's, um, so there's a protein which builds up in the brain, and that protein's called amyloid. Mm -hmm. And in, in uh, 1991, we were working on a family uh, who came from Nottingham, uh, and we found in that family where they get the disease at the age of 55, we found a mutation in the amyloid gene. And so we said that this is how the disease starts. The, this is how the disease starts. It starts with amyloid building up in the brain and everything else, the nerves that die and the clinical features of the disease follow from that. And the follow-up from that is if we can reduce amyloid in the brain, we should be able to at least help to treat the disease. And that's that overall is the breakthrough because in the last year, we've now got drugs which do reduce amyloid in the brain and they help with the clinical features too. Well, but Johnny, are you, the thing is, are you, as we were saying that that's a genetic fact, but what I find very interesting is, I mean, can you just acquire this amyloid or is it always in you? Well, it's all, all of us make this protein all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a normal part of our metabolism, but only some of us allow it to build up in the brain. So you can see it on, um, on scans of the brain lighting up in those individuals. So we all make it, but we don't all deposit it in the brain. Right. Uh, okay. So so then is it an issue of being diagnosed early? Because the difficulty with that is, I mean, women of my age as well, we have all sorts, with, I'm forgetting everything. I don't know if it's hormones. I don't know if it's Alzheimer's because that's in my family. So how do you know? And should you go to the doctor? Well, I think you should. I mean, I really strongly suspect you're fine. Let me <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we all forget things all the time. You know, one th just, uh, you know, one thing to say is we all forget things all the time. This morning I'd lost my keys. You know, <laughs> you know we all do that. But, you know, I think it's a bit, it's more, more important, more serious than that. It's somebody, for example, who goes to the shop twice in a day to buy milk and eggs. And they don't re remember that they've been earlier in the day. You know, it's that sort of uh, forgetting, which I doubt if, I mean, I don't know, but I oh. doubt you do that sort of thing. <laughs> but, you know, if, you're, if you are worried about it, yes, you should go and see, you should go and see your, your doctor. You should. Often it's not the person themselves who's worried. It's often their partner who's worried. You know, that's, that's that's more typically the the thing because if you f are forgetting things you forget you're forgetting them so mm. it, you know it's more that the partner will pick this up really but definitely you should go and see your doctor if you're worried definitely you should i mean that's the frightening thing as you said you forget that you're forgetting so you know yeah. with this ter terrible disease and you know mm -hmm. that it goes so far that you you just don't even remember how to eat or drink or stand i mean it, or, is, or are there different sorts or variations i mean I'm, it's very confusing so well about three quarters of the people who start to have what we d dementia have alzheimer's disease the other quarter have other reasons for them losing uh, losing nerve cells so about three quarters, so dementia is a global term and Alzheimer's disease is a specific, a specific disease. So that, that's the distinction. 
Now, we can now, there are ways we can tell um, whether one has Alzheimer's disease uh, in the context of dementia. We can tell by blood tests and by scans, we can tell what the form of dementia you have. And the good news is we have to get better at diagnosing this disease earlier because that's when we know that the treatments that are now coming on board have some efficacy. Yes, because, you know, hormonal changes can um, affect your memory, like the menopause, can't it? Sure, and depression no. can too. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and the, the, so, yes, there's many reasons one might, might have problems with one's uh, memory besides be, besides being in the early stages of dementia and yes, yes. menopause is one and depression is definitely another really mm -hmm. i didn't know that Matt, what were you going to say no i'm just absolutely fascinated by all the because because it's the umbrella word that is the exactly. dementia um it's something that we all fear. I think we fear it more than almost anything. When we do forget something, it isn't that we've forgotten something. We're frustrated. We've forgotten. We're, we're terrified because you go, what does this mean? What does this mean? You know, I came out of my Tesco's yesterday, couldn't find my car. But that happens every <laughs> single time I go to Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> but but yes, no, it, but there are moments when you just go, you, you're genuinely worried. Why? Why didn't I remember something so simple? And it's happened a few minutes ago. Um, but what do I want to ask? Oh my goodness, it would take a week. Um, my friend, ha uh, my husband has a very good friend who has been diagnosed, I think with Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. And yet he'll go and spend time with him and have these completely lucid conversations. He will remember everything, great huge swathes of Shakespeare and all sorts of things that are so intricate. All the and then suddenly he'll get people mixed up and, 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 so you don't even notice there's there's anything wrong and it's it's just so sad because he's still there yeah and no no and it's imp well a couple of things about what you've said the first thing is the first problem in alzheimer's disease is often not remembering things from the past but making new memories the part of the brain that goes first is the part of the brain which makes new memories and that, so that's the way to think of it. The other thing you said though, which is really important is he's still there. He's still got a, quali a quality of life and it's important not to be kind of, cat I mean, it's a terrible disease, but it's important not to be catastrophic about it. You know, he, if he's enjoying the conversations that he's having, then that's worth it. And it, it's, you know, mm -hmm even though he's in the early stages of disease, you know, he's still got a quality of life and, and it's important to focus on what he can do rather than focus on what he can't do, really. That's what, what, John, what's happened to Bruce Willis? What is the dementia that he's got where he doesn't remember things, names, people? He's got what's called frontotemporal dementia uh, and that's a different, it's got a different pathology and uh, it uh, uh, and uh, it affects. So I'll just do a, the Alzheimer's disease first affects a bit of the brain that's kind of behind your ear, called the hippocampus, and that's where new memories are made. He's got frontotemporal dementia that hits the bit of the brain here at the front, and that call causes him to be a, well. He's lost the ability to speak. Uh, to a large extent and to understand speech that so it's a slightly different sim symptoms it's a very unpleasant disease it can cause people to to have a very short fuse as well so they can have uh, a, a very bad temper because of their loss of the frontal cortex it, it is a rather similar process though but it just affects different parts of the brain and so has diff different different symptoms yeah, yeah absolutely. John, John I have to say um you were saying about the brain and how you always wanted to work um with with the intricacies of the brain and and it's a very complex um part of us isn't it the brain is like because I know my my brother very sadly has got a brain tumor and he had an operation and lost his speech but apart from that he he's been absolutely fine and then, of course, the tumor, because it was a, 
grade four, has come back after a few years, very sadly. And now he has difficulty. He looks at his shaving, apparently, and, and, and doesn't know what to do. And then it comes back and, you know, we, we have incredible conversations, but then suddenly he'll do something that, that's unusual. And you think, oh my God, yes, you remember. But it's, it's, somebody said it's like a grain of sand, isn't it? The, the grains of sand, it's, it's, it's like so separating difficult. sand from sugar. Yeah, that's what yeah. Said. yeah. yeah no, it, the, I mean, of course, these are terrible. I mean, you know, these are terrible diseases. And to look, of course, our brain really is, is us. That is us. And, you know, to lose to, uh, either through a tumour or through a neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's or frontotemporal mm -hmm. dementia, we feel we're losing ourself. It's really, uh, a, a t a, yes, they're terrible things. We're getting yes. better, though. We're getting better at, at both diagnosing them and treating them. Yes. You know, I'm when, 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 oh, sorry to interrupt. When, when I was a little girl, um, my, my grandparents, they, they uh, my grandparents' friends all lived till they were in the sort of late 80s, 90s. And none of them had dementia or even memory. They were all they were all living, you know, in their own houses, everything else. And so to me, to see this generation of people now who who have it, what what what's happened? Actually, I think it's I think you're I'm going to say I think your memory is wrong. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Uh, no, Thank no, you. No, no. Where am I? Who are you? <laughs> no, I think it's wrong in this way, and that is that the people in in the generation you're talking about who had dementia, maybe were, they were hidden away in some way, and you you know you didn't get to meet them because you know families were ashamed of them in a way, and people with dementia were were hidden away, and without you know friends and relatives necessarily knowing. Of course, some people live long and fine. My mother's 93 and she's still a feisty pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's Absolutely. fine. Absolutely. Yes, I, I spoke about my great grandmother who had, and she was actually, I remember um, my grandparents couldn't cope and they, they took her to this place. I don't know what sort of place it was, whether it was an old people's home, a special place, but because she actually lost every sort of, I mean, she was she was a very funny lady. And I'd say to her as a child, which, where's mummy? And she, she said, she, she went that way. So it was like, you know, she would make jokes all the time. And I remember going to see her when I was about eight and, she, and there was a lady in the next bed with white fluffy hair. And she said to me, isn't that a cute little dog in the next bed? And she actually thought it was a little poodle. And I always remember the, those sort of little, quirks that she had but it was sad but you're right she was kind of locked away at that point and also I suppose uh John I, I it, my sort of family's group you know you're talking Sunderland sort of in the 60s you know they were that was their family group so that's the people that I knew yeah so yeah. outside of that group it's possible it happened but I didn't mm. see it ever yes, yeah. yes. I mean, I, in fact, there is good news in a sense, and there's very good work ca came out of Cambridge three or four years ago, which showed that the proportion of, let's say, 80 year olds who have dementia has gone down 20 percent. So and that's wow. to do probably probably that's to do with better diets, mm -hmm. stopping smoking and um control i was i was going to ask you about diet and do you think a lot of it is to do with the way we all eat now i think we can reduce the amount of dementia the evidence for this is pretty good by um control of blood pressure in middle age especially and uh, a healthy diet basically heart health heart health definitely helps brain health no question yes so there's very good work from uh, the group in cambridge about, about this and, and gut health too uh gut health uh, that i don't i don't I, I don't know about particularly but certainly healthy diet certainly mm. healthy diet. what do you eat then john <laughs> i had a <laughs> sandwich on the way into oh. the <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, so you're looking after your health. I love your know, mental health. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I think being sociable and intellectual and meeting people and talking, I mean, your brain is so active. That must help. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely you should um, get out and about and um, and elderly people should get out. And that's um, one of the things that, that's been sad about COVID, for example. My, and I mean, just my grandmother, my, my mother's doing doing fine, but she used to go out once or twice a week to meet a, a group of old ladies like herself and COVID just stopped that, and it's yeah. not back, and that's a shame. I mean, she misses going out, and and I think it's bad for all old people to be stuck at, at home. Mm. Fortunately, she's on the Alexa with me and my brother and sister, you know, regularly. But you know, she misses personal contact, of course. But John, you know, that in in some countries, the blue zones, where they have people that live longer than anyone else. And um, what is their sort of state of Alzheimer's there? Is it? We yeah? don't know. That's a good question. That's a very good question. There's a very nice study, um, um, which uh, I've been following in uh, Holland um, by a young researcher called Henna Holstiger. And she's gone round uh, collecting samples and histories of all the centenarians uh, in Holland. And... Um, you know, it's a great study, and these, they're nearly all women, these women, um, because of course women have an easier life than men as well. Yeah. <laughs> you are so, yes, you're so brave, but you're actually saying that into a camera, so you're not really, because you know we can't get you, can't we? <laughs> but they, what she says about them is they've all got great immune systems, they've all got great immune systems. And so these people who, these ladies who live over a hundred, they've all got great immune systems. They fight off diseases, you know, they're, and they're, they're active. I mean, they're very active. Some of them are still cycling out to the shops and so on. So, you know, those are the people who do well. And we, she's studying the genetics of them to try and understand mm. the genetic basis of that. Yeah. Yes, and exercise. Exercise, absolutely. And stress, it doesn't stress pay, play a huge part in it, the amount of stress that people go through? Uh, well, I think that stress does blood pressure, doesn't it? So we've already <laughs> said that blood pressure is not good. I think that mm -hmm. I, I hesitate, you know, I'm, I hesitate to say stress. What is stress exact, exactly? I'm not quite, you know, I'm not quite understanding what it, it's different things for different people. Mm -hmm, so yeah. live healthy for sure be sociable eat well and don't have bacon sandwiches on the way into work right? <laughs> okay. yeah, you park your car in the tesco's car park <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, that stresses me out <laughs> yeah you've been you're an incredible incredible oh. guest would you come back and see us again sure sure what's what's not to like about this <laughs> oh this has been so interesting talking to you thank you so much thanks thank for having you. me Oh, you're welcome. Thank Pleasure. you so much, John. And, and really, we are proud and honoured that you've uh, oh, joined us on the show and all the work you've done. And I shall now make you a you. Sir John. Oh, you already are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Nice to see you. Lovely and to be too. Too. Thank you. Thank John. you. Bye. Bye. What an interesting wow. man. Oh, he's. Oh. Do you know what's interesting about him is he's a serious scientist, but incredibly human and warm, isn't he? Like Yes, and one of the questions I would have loved to have asked him is, how do you do that serious science and then be so warm? And then and how do you deal with the emotion around all that? I would find that quite difficult. Absolutely, Caddy. I completely agree with you. Well, you have to keep you. that one for when he comes back. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And you need to jump in and ask these questions. Don't wait to be asked, Caddy. Just say, wait, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, oh, shut up. up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a, lot, a lot of food for thought about yeah. about this. Yeah, and Debbie, thank you for bringing him in because yeah. honestly, what a fantastic guest! And it oh. is something we all worry about. And I think what Dee said about it being hormonal. I mean, mm. having to separate the hormonal from the is this actually a disease? I think it's something that I worry about all the time. Yeah, yeah, I do. Too. But sometimes I forget what I've just done. That's that's what's frightening. And he said that's the you know making new memories. Sometimes I put the kettle on and I can't remember I've just done it. 
yeah well, has, anyone, has anyone around you told you they're worried about you no but my my kids did give me for christmas a big uh bottle of um sort of uh, of pills that said for your memory <laughs> and uh, and i said oh dear and they went it's a joke and i went is it is it <laughs> Ooh, is oh, is it? Oh. Yeah, and, and at what when point it, would they tell you? Would they not want to stress you? No, they would tell me. Do your kids ever say to you, we've had this conversation, or I've told you yes, this already? All the time. Oh, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Oh. <laughs> also, Thank God, it's not just me. Yeah. No, not just you, but you know, I've got a friend who actually, when I say something again, but this has always been from what, when I was about 20, she goes, repeat, repeat. So, <laughs> oh. I think so it's actually, I'm, I'm always doing things and, and, and somebody's giving me information. So sometimes I'm, because of my multitasking, maybe only a bit of it's gone in. Yeah. Or, you know, when, when somebody turns around and says, but I've, we've had this conversation, I, I've already told you. You feel yeah. terrible because, <laughs> of course, it comes back to you instantly. Of course, yes. of course we've had a conversation. It's when it doesn't you... come back to you. But there again, oh. you might not have been listening to start with. Well, yes. True. Been distracted. As you say, multitasking, which, which is what we do all the time. And I say to my daughter, oh, my God, I, I forgot where the car was or where my kid... And she said, Mum, you've always been like that. So that makes me feel better. <laughs> yes. And my mother's very sweet. She's 82, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with her. But I'm the one that tells her stories over again. And she waits very patiently till I get to the end. <laughs> yes. That was interesting oh. when you told me last time. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting about. <laughs> oh gosh, these the, I love these Wonder Bird shows. They're so lovely and so nice and relaxed. So thank you, girls, so oh, much for being on. Your brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, listen, listen, Debbie is somebody who doesn't repeat herself. I spent many, many hours in the car going backwards and forwards because we were working together recently, and she would tell me stories, and I'd be going, "Yes," and then what? And then then we'd stop for petrol or whatever, and she'd tell all these stories. But you never told the same story twice. No, that's a good no, story. I, I can't remember. You've got that lots, <laughs> lots of stories. <laughs> Not, very lots entertaining. Of stories. Oh, but anyway, guys, we will see you next week. And uh, we will. It was a brilliant show. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye. See, see you soon. Bye. Bye.